as our IHLs, Institutes of Higher Learning, over the past few weeks. Um, as I always have said, and many scientists have said, if the virus behaves more like influenza, affecting children more, and making children the vectors for transmission, we would have closed schools long ago. But COVID-19, because of the way it behaves, it gives us the option of keeping schools open, provided there are stringent precautionary measures. And that is what that has been what we are doing. So by keeping schools open, this prevented <clears throat> a major disruption to people's lives, especially our frontline workers, our healthcare workers, especially children from families who are, which are more vulnerable and don't have home-based support for their education. It also avoided the situation where school closed and students, especially the teenagers, start roaming around the community, exposing themselves to more risk. So school, keeping school open, keeping it safe with precautionary measures has been a plus in this fight against this virus. I saw a Straits Times report yesterday uh, that gave some data on infections of students, so I thought I'd report some of the infection figures as of end of yesterday. Say preschool, five infections so far, number from overseas sources, that means they travel, two, number from family members, three, number of infection from the school, none. As for schools, primary, secondary, and JC, we have five infections as of end of yesterday. Number from overseas sources, that means the child travel, one. Number from family members infecting the child, the, the student, four. Number of infection from school, none. IHLs, we have 48 infections. Number from overseas, they went overseas, many of them on internship coming back. Number from overseas is 38. Number from family members from their homes, five. Number from work, because they were on attachment, one. Number from social activities, two. Number from campus, including the hostels, none. So as of now, I think our track record in keeping schools safe has not been too bad. And really, I need to thank teachers, parents, students, all stakeholders for working so hard, being so understanding, cooperating with our precautionary measures to keep school open and keep school safe. But never be complacent, never let our guard down. When there's widespread community transmission, chances are there will be transmission in schools and we must always be prepared for that. Many parents have written to me over the past weeks, some signed petitions to request for school closure. And I've been doing my best, together with my team, to explain that schools can be kept safe and kept open. But I've always explained to the parents, we do not rule out moving to 100% home-based learning. And, but if we do, it must be done at the right time and for the right reason. But in preparation for this possibility, we did a one-day home-based learning this week for every student. So Wednesday was for primary school, yesterday was for secondary school, today is for all JC students. So every child, every student had a chance to go through home-based learning this week, including their teachers too. And that process this week helped us solve many teething problems, solve the technical glitches. We loan out almost 4,000 devices to students who don't have devices at home. We loan out also many dongles for students who don't have Wi-Fi at home. And we have some corporate sponsors, which I must thank them for that. Um, and parents who perform essential services, such as healthcare, or without childcare support at home, they register with the schools, and this week they are able to send their children to school even during the home-based learning day. And so while the children are in school, there's proper supervision as well as safe distancing and precautionary measures. And I think overall, the exercise this week went smoothly. And with this new national posture and the need to implement a national circuit breaker, it is now time, and with the right reason, for us to move to full home-based learning for schools. 
This coming week is a short week for most because Friday is Good Friday and Thursday and Wednesday and Thursday is already home-based learning for many students. So actually it's a short week. We will take Monday and Tuesday to sort out the remaining administrative and technical issues. And from Wednesday, 8th April onwards, we will move to full home-based learning for all schools. And it will last until 4th of May. So excluding the, the short week next week, is a three-week stretch until 4th of May. Now let me explain why it is now the right time and for the right reasons. Because we are implementing a national circuit breaker uh, policy and schools is, a, is an important part of it. It will help us move towards a position where we can enhance safe distancing, cut down social interaction significantly, and reduce transmissions. With the home-based learning experience this week, we are also confident that we can cover the curriculum properly and in time, and our assessment so far, there is no need for us to claw back from June holidays. So the June holidays are so far intact. And with the new measures, most students are required to stay at home, so there's also less worry that students will roam around and mix around in the community, exposing themselves to more risk. And because telecommuting has become the default for parents and for workers, plus school remains open to those who need support, we can manage the disruptions to lives. I know many uh, students and parents will be concerned about exams. Um, to reduce the anxiety of students, we'll do away this year all mid-year school exams. Many levels already don't have mid-year school exams, so we will just do away with the rest. And that also helped us claw back three weeks of teaching times for the relevant levels. But national exams, <clears throat> they will be considered just like most workplaces will close except essential services. School will no longer open, but national exams will still considered be essential and they will continue. So there's mother tongue uh, language examinations, oral and written, that's on the 1st and 2nd of June. Those will proceed. Numbers are not huge. We will decentralize the teaching, uh, the sitting with safe distancing and that can continue. PSLE, O level, N level, A levels, these are year ends, so we don't need to worry for now. But we'll monitor the situation, and if need be, we make adjustments. Take, for example, if curriculum teaching is compromised, some topics can be taken out of the exam papers, and during marking, if knowledge in that topic affects how you answer the question, marking will also be more were adjusted to be more lenient in those cases, and if really need be, apply special considerations during grading, and we have done this before. For preschool, kindergarten care, and student care centers in schools, we take a similar approach. Remain open for parents that need the support, and then with proper precautions, we keep out staff and students with any symptoms, and then with safe distancing. Now let me move on and talk a little bit about IHLs, Institutes of Higher Learning, and these are universities, polytechnics, and IT. For the AUs, the autonomous universities, they will go 100% online lessons. Exams continue, but exams are all online now, all convert to take-home assignments, so there's no more sit-in physical examinations. Many of the universities have also changed grading to pass-fail, but for students who like a GPA, they can request for it. It can be converted to a GPA. And some universities have also decide, decided to defer credits so that students do not have the pressure to complete all their credits for this semester. Polytechnics and ITE, school is repo, reopening for them. They are currently on their year-end holidays, academic year-end holidays. They are opening soon, in the next one, two weeks. Again, for a new batch of students going into polytechnic first year or going into uh, ITE first year, it is also essential for them to come to campus, get themselves registered, and get themselves locked on to the online learning materials. So it's essential for the new batch of students to come to campus, register, get equipped, and start their online learning. 
So onboarding for these students will start next Monday. And students will come in small groups, spread out throughout different times of the day, across different days of the week, and steadily, progressively get themselves on board for their education. I must be honest and say this situation with a lot of online learning, home-based learning, is far from ideal from an education point of view because we know that education is holistic. It's really not just about covering the curriculum. No, that's the easier part. Education is a social uh, process and a social journey. But we must make the best out of it, given the current situation we are in. So for all students, now that you have some reprieve in terms of your mid-year exams and have to stay home, try to learn outside of the syllabus, read widely, find the curiosity in you, find what subjects, what areas you are passionate about. Now's a good time, next three weeks, to ponder over such issues. Share with your family all the things and personal hygiene tips and habits that the schools have been teaching you Bring it home, whether it's washing your hands, not how to wash your hand, don't touch your face, wipe down routine, checking your temperature, checking your symptoms. All these are things that schools have been teaching you. And so bring it home and share it with your parents. There are many teachable moments as well as we, the nation, go through this uh, crisis and dealing with this virus. Bring those lessons home too and talk to your family about it. As for schools, <coughs> Not the most ideal situation, but find opportunities within this situation, new ways of schooling. One particular area is that we now have students with lesser home support, some with no support, who are going to be with us for the next three and a half weeks. So let's do more to help them, to uplift them, mobilize our resources differently to make a difference to them in this three and a half weeks. So stay safe, stay home, stay curious. Thank you.